Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to check back in with the Athlon 200GE. We've done some gaming, I've done some kind of benchmarks, so I thought I'd share it with you. Keep watching to see how it went. Okay, so welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you'd have probably seen the video where we built this pink piece of trash and made it into something a little bit more special. Now, we've used the Gigabyte AX370M DS3H, got it right that time, and also a Athlon 200GE, which at the moment is AMD's budget king. This thing is incredible. I've got to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting a great deal from it. Running at 3.2 gigahertz with two cores, four threads, and a Vega 3 graphics core. For 50 pounds, you can't really expect a great deal. But surprisingly, this thing is actually pretty damn awesome. Now, let me go into some of the other specs of what we've got in this machine before I tell you how the games have gone and see, show you some of the benchmarks. Now, inside this case, we've got a uh, a really old generic kind of 450 watt power supply, nothing particularly special there. There is a 240 gig SSD, which is the uh, OCZ ARC 100. Again, a slightly older drive, nothing too fancy. You can pick up equivalents for around like 30 pounds in the UK at the moment. Um, obviously we've got this motherboard as well. Now originally this system starts out with eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, which was the Corsair Vengeance LPX at 2133 megahertz. Now that was a single stick, eight gig stick. Ideally, this needs to be dual channel. There is a 10, maybe 15% performance increase overall, and it also feels a little snappier if you're using two sticks of RAM. So I've borrowed another stick of RAM. At the moment it's in 16 gigs to make it dual channel. I would still recommend probably eight gigs because of the pricing wise. If you're spending kind of 100, 120 pounds on RAM, Really, a $50 processor or £50 processor isn't the best mix for that. So I would still say that 8 gigs of RAM is the kind of sweet spot for this kind of setup. But again, if you can find the RAM or you want to use this processor as a placeholder for when you get something a little bit better further up the line, or maybe when you change the graphics card, that kind of thing, then yeah, make the platform your own. That is the beauty of PCs. Make it your own. You decide what you want to do. Anyway, I'm digressing. Let's get onto some of these games. So. We've done a selection of games. Now I'll go through the games that we're using. So the games we're going to be using are, starting off with Fortnite. We've done some testing with Fortnite. Now, I tested Fortnite in an eight gig configuration and a 16 gig configuration, just to see if there was any benefit in it. And there was a noticeable benefit for the dual channel. So I then stuck with 16 gigs for the rest of the testing. So take that as a uh, disclaimer or whatever you like. All the games apart from the very first one will be with 16 gigs in dual channel mode. So if you're wondering why the figures are looking a lot better, that's probably the reason why. Now the second game we've tested is uh, Dota 2, a, a very popular esports title and again it's free so I could download it onto the account and test it. Now I've got to be honest with you, you'll see from the gameplay, I don't know what I'm doing with Dota 2, not a clue, but I've got the MSI Afterburner running so you can see what the uh, results are like, see what the frame rates are like, and you can get an idea of some of the gameplay experience you may get. Then moving on to the next game would be Beach Buggy Racing. Now this is actually a favourite of mine from the Microsoft Store. The game is a free game, you can just download it and play it. It's a very casual game, uh, but it has quite an kind of addictive property to it. So I've basically gone on this game, started from scratch, but again, you'll be able to see what the gameplay is like in that. And sticking with Microsoft Store titles, we've then gone on to Asphalt 8, which again is another one of my kind of favourite games. I quite like playing it. It's a good distraction, and it actually looks quite nice and it plays quite well. So again, we'll be seeing some of that. Then we moved on to something a little bit more serious, which is Far Cry 5. Now Far Cry 5, I'll be straight up front with you, it doesn't look great. It's running at 720p at best in the lowest settings, but it's playable. And if you wanted to add a another discrete graphics card to this setup, maybe something like a um, GTX 660 Ti, you could get some really nice gameplay from it. And again, if that's something you'd like to see it in a later video, this in a combination with a separate graphics card, then let me know in the comments the sort of cards you'd like to see me paired up with. And obviously after Far Cry 5, there's one other title which can't be missed out, and that is CSGO. 
So for all you CS goers out there, last but not least, we've got some gameplay from CSGO, which actually runs surprisingly well. And again, you can I've run it in 1080p, but if you want to lower the settings a little bit to 720p, I think you could get, a, well, I'm not gonna spoil it. You can get some pretty good frame rates. So anyway, let's take a look at the benchmarks. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the gameplay. Why do you want to land? It's got dusty. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. I can't tell. Are you a boy or a girl? I'm a girl. Oh, nice. What skins have you got? Um, not a lot. I've got Skull Trooper, Drift, um... What else have I got? Uh, not, I can't remember any of the others. Are you a girl? No, I'm a boy. I sound like a girl. I only asked because of your name. Oh. Nah, this is my sister's account. She landed on the same building. So. We ride!
Let's go. Absolutely. to battle.
Okay, so there you go. There's some examples of gameplay with the Athlon 200 GE. And uh, what do you think? I'm pretty impressed. I've got to be honest with you. I didn't think some of the games would play at all. Some of them were obviously going to play, such as the Windows Store games. They're designed to run on a lot lesser hardware, but they proved to be really playable and really enjoyable. So if that's your bag, then this is definitely right up your street. Now, if you're more of a Far Cry 5 or the kind of AAA titles, it might be worth throwing a little bit more money in the kitty and maybe opt in for a Ryzen 3, or maybe even a Ryzen 5 with integrated graphics on it. But that's your decision. For £50 or $55 in the US, the Athlon 200 GE really does give you a lot to think about and also runs those games really well. Again, what did you think of it? I was really impressed. Counter-Strike is a, a CPU intensive game and generally doesn't do particularly well with these kind of APUs, but I find it really playable and really enjoyable. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So I find this to be um, a real eye opener, actually. I wasn't expecting much from it but it actually does deliver pretty much most of the goods that you could wish for. So this has been the Athlon 200 GE. That's been some gameplay. I admit I'm rubbish, but hopefully I'll get better in time. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and we'll catch you in the next video. Oh, and don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the chime icon if you want to see more content like this. See you in the next one.